is, is based off, uh, which has to be equal to RL, which is the minimum return level, which is going to be 2%, minus the expected return of the portfolio, divided by the standard deviation, which is 3. So in this case here, we end up with the expected return, okay, is minus 1.28 times 3, Okay, is equal to 2 minus R bar. Okay, So actually when I bring R bar over, I end up with R bar is equal to 2 plus 1.28 times 3. Okay, So let's do that. That's 2 plus 1.28 times 3 gives us, uh, we would have an expected value of, okay, it's 5 point, it's 5 point, 5.84. 5.84 okay if that makes sense is what we would is what we would require okay uh, now we have portfolio a does meet that okay it is greater than that expected value so that actually satisfies the condition okay what about portfolio b okay well if we have a look at portfolio b so portfolio b okay and uh, we have don't forget Z is equal to R L minus R bar over S D. Okay, so we have minus 1.28 is equal to 2% minus the expected value all over S D. Its standard deviation is 5. Okay, so what we end up with is we end up with minus 1.28 times 5 is equal to 2 minus R bar. Or R bar in this case is equal to 2 plus 1.28 times 5 okay which gives us a value of 2 plus 1.28 times 5 okay times 5 gives us 8.4 percent so our bar is 8.4 percent and actually so you can see actually portfolio b matches this condition its return is above this so that's actually still in the game if that makes sense okay and what about portfolio c so when we have a look at portfolio c and uh, we have portfolio c okay uh, well we have once again z is equal to r l minus r bar over s d z is based off the risk level of 10 percent which is minus 1.28 standard units it's equal to r l this minimum sorry r l is 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 two okay it's the minimum risk return okay uh, the minimum return level that we're willing to accept minus the expected return all over the standard deviation which is equal to which is equal to eight so in this case we end up with minus 1.28 times 8 is equal to 2 minus R bar, which tells us that R bar, the expected return for portfolio C under these conditions, okay, uh, would be equal to 2 plus 1.28 times times 8, okay, which gives us a value of, which gives us a value of 2 plus 1.28 times 8 gives us a value of 12.24%. So R bar is 12.24%. So portfolio C uh, it satisfies this particular condition as well. Okay, so really what we have here is this: is that uh, what the what the uh, I suppose what Telser's criterion tells us to do, to to do is to choose the portfolio that gives us the highest return. Okay, choose the portfolio that has the highest return. Portfolio C has the highest return uh, compared to portfolio B and portfolio A. But more importantly, to choose a portfolio that has the highest return, okay, uh, once it adheres to a constraint that recognizes the risk level, okay, there we go, and also the minimum desired return level. The, the minimum desired return level. So actually, in this situation here, what we're going to choose, we're going to choose portfolio. Portfolio C, okay, is what we're going to actually go for, okay, because 14 meets is the highest return out of a lot of them, and it also satisfies the minimum expected return uh, under these particular con under these particular conditions. Okay, guys, once again, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And I hope that this video uh, dealing with uh, Telser's criterion, uh, safety first criterion, I hope that this was in some way intuitive. And more importantly, I hope that was helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.